ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم والصلاه والسلام على اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون صلى الله عليه وسلم Indeed, the praises for Allah, we praise him, we seek Allah's help exclusively, we seek Allah's forgiveness, and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil which manifests from within ourselves and the harm thereof. I give open testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship but Allah, highly glorified is he, he has no partner in the dominion of his creation. I give further testimony that Muhammad, to whom the Quran was revealed, is a servant and messenger, peace and prayers be upon him, peace and prayers be extended to his family, his companions, and all those who gather in righteousness. What follows there after? I mean, uh, all you who believe have taqwa, this deep and incomparable regard, this reverence, this fear that is due solely to Allah, right? As it is his right to receive it and die not except as Muslims, as, uh, as uh, within a state of Islam, willful submission. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Muslims. Uh, uh, I begin uh, first by uh, asking your pardon uh, for our late beginning today. Um, took a COVID test this morning. I'm good, negative. Uh, so alhamdulillah. Uh, 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 other than that, I'd still be here. No, I wouldn't. But uh, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for allowing us all to be here. Uh, we thank Allah for giving us beautiful, this beautiful deen, this way of life, uh, al Islam that he's given us. And in today's khutbah, uh, before we begin, I feel it's always important in these gatherings for us to bring to mind those who are not able to be with us uh, in person, virtually, those who are obstructed for whatever reason, uh, whatever those circumstances are, whose hearts are with us, but they are not able to join us. So we pray that Allah make their conditions, their circumstances easy, give them relief. We pray for all those who are dealing with ailments, uh, health, mental, spiritual, whatever ailments that they are, we pray that Allah gives them relief and gives them ease. I mean. Amen. So in this brief football, you want to really explore, uh, explore this connection between the freedom of this testimony and the potential that it offers us in our life, not just as individuals, but as a community, right? But even as we talk about being a blessed community, a favored community, we're talking about um, uh, uh, something that is con uh, constituted of individuals, right? You cannot have a blessed community without having blessed individuals. You can't have a functioning community, uh, a high functioning community without having individuals who are also likewise um, inclined. All right, so Allah gives us this and at times we don't think about it, but the beauty of Allah's, uh, of Allah's guidance is that it brings us back. It is, it is uh, cyclical in nature, right? It is these all repeating verses. We come from, Allah gives us a reminder. He gives us something to think about in, in one ayah. And we find ourselves back at that same point, um, thinking on it, you know, 10 ayahs later or the next surah, right? And it's given to us in different ways. And within this guidance, there is, there's a freedom. And I want to first begin by looking at, uh, in Surah Tukaf, this is the 18th. No, it's not the 18th. It's the 18th surah, but the ayah that I want to look at is the 28th. And we'll begin from there. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون يريدون وجهه ولا تعدون عينك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قبله عن ذكر عن ذكرنا واتبع حواه وكان أمره فرطا صدق الله لي and that is, and keep thy soul content with those who call on their Lord morning and evening, seeking his face, and let not thine eyes pass beyond them, seeking the pop and glitter of this life. Nor obey any whose heart we have permitted to neglect the remembrance of us, one who follows his own desires, whose case has gone beyond, beyond all bounds. Surely Allah speaks the truth. Now, the, the, the first part of this, I have, keep thy soul content with those who call on their Lord morning and evening, seeking his face. 
and let, let not by an eyes, let, let not by an eyes, eyes pass beyond it. This is a reminder for us. This is a reminder for us to appreciate, appreciate the community of the free. And we don't always refer to ourselves as, as the community of the free, but if we think about this idea of the testimony, when we get up and we give the shahada, right? When we say there's no God but God and Muhammad is his messenger. When we say this freely on our own, of our own volition, and we understand what Allah says, uh, that there is no light of Rafidin, there is no compulsion, let there be no compulsion in religion. Let there be no compulsion in that, in that testimony. And what we say we believe in, who we believe in, um, this is an, a tremendously important point for us to bring our attention back to. And this is what we want to speak about uh, in kind of the offshoots of the importance of this particular ayah. So the community that arises out of the individuals, the individuals who, uh, who freely, who freely make this, this testimony, right? That there's no God, I bear witness. There's nothing worthy of worship but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. That Muhammad is his messenger. When we historically think about um, testimonies, right? Oaths of, of fealty. When we think about this historically, this is not something that has been given or allowed for the individual to take up on their own, right? This is something that you could make, you can make an oath. You can make a testimony. You can say, hail Caesar. You can say, I, 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 I testify, I am loyal to so-and-so and go about your business. And nobody cared if you really felt that way. It was just about you making the state. It was about you bending the knee, so to speak, in public. And what does that do? That enslaves an individual. That enslaves, it says that the public statements don't align with the private convictions, right? And Allah, in, in, in the beautiful deen that he has given us and his way of life and the examples that we have um, uh, through all the righteous forebears, it's a reminder to us that freedom begins with the principle posture. It begins with the, uh, drawing the line and saying that, no, I'm not going to say something that I don't believe, regardless of the cost, right? That is true freedom. So the community, the group that comes together that is built upon that type of commitment, that is built upon that type of, uh, 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 that type of principle, that is a community that has the potential to bring about the highest, the highest expression of, of humanity, the highest individual and the highest community expression. So we thank Allah. First of all, we think about we think about um, what we should value and what what we should value in ourselves. That is where we look at, and that is why figures like Bilal ibn Raba, may Allah be pleased with him, are so important to us because even as someone who had been taken as a slave, someone who had been diminished, someone who had been oppressed, his freedom. His freedom and his connection to Allah, and this is important, his connection to Allah, his recognition of Allah, and recognition that Allah had endowed him with, uh, with that sense of dignity and, and excellence, it would not allow him to repeat that. It would not allow him to say anything other than that. Right? So we look to that as an example of what freedom does. And of course, his tormentors are people who are used to being able to, to levy their resources, levy uh, their might, levy their strength and their power to get people to bend, to get people to, to acquiesce and to fall in line. And they didn't care if they really believed, if the people believed or not. It was enough for them, the illusion of power, the illusion of, of permanence, the, illu the illusion of, of being, of having some kind of might. It was enough for people to play into that for them. They didn't really care about what was on the inside. Right, so these are people living in illusion and looking for people to play along with. All right, so Bilal, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, he is a reminder for us. And not only is he a reminder for that, for us, of course, we understand the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the righteous Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with all of them, right, that these are also reminders for us in how we establish value, how we establish value. When we think about today, if we were to kind of look at um, kind of this dichotomy, this, 
is opposing models that we have. We think about Prophet Muhammad, peace and prayers be upon him. We think about the, 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 the Sahaba. We think about all of them at their lowest point, at their introduction into society, right, when they made themselves known. We look and we see a group that had at the, at, at the outset that was dismissed. And then a group that becomes despised, a group that becomes openly uh, hated uh, and, 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 and fought against, right? A, a group that was openly uh, terrorized. And think about this, that there were people still trickling in more and more to be a part of this, right? People who had been dispossessed of their own, uh, of their earnings, or people who have been shut out of the economic uh, life of the day, right? We all recall, recall the, uh, basically the, the embargo that had placed, had been placed upon the Muslims, right? When they were shut out, they couldn't, they couldn't trade, they're starving, they're, they're pushed out to the edges of society, but yet they're still growing. They're still growing. Now think about this, Think about this in, in, uh, uh, in contrast with the, uh, and, and I don't want to paint too broad a picture because this is something that actually applies to more than just uh, Muslims, but just religion in general today, right? And, and it kind of goes under this idea, this, this gospel of prosperity. Many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this idea, gospel of prosperity, right? You enter to win it. We're here to, 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 to get as much as we can build as tall and as broad as we can, shine as much as we can, have as, you know, have as much as we can and celebrate it. And that is supposed to be a reflection of our faith. That is supposed to be a reflection of, 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 uh, of God's favor on us with this idea of a gospel of prosperity. Now, of course, we understand that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell us to be people who remove themselves from, from the race or remove themselves from establishment. Far from it. Right. Our book tells us, says to get your share of this material world, get your share of this of these resources that have been placed at your disposal. Right. We're supposed to do that. But Allah also tells us that our resources, right, the resources are a means to furthering our responsibility that Allah has given us. The responsibility that we have freely taken on when we testify that there's no God but God and Muhammad is his messenger. When we testify to that, and agree to the code of conduct, and we agree to the institutional framework that Al-Islam gives us. When we understand our responsibilities through zakat, when we understand our responsibility to engage not just our, ourselves and our individual communities, but we understand the universal community, the universal life as, 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 uh, as expressed within the Hajj. We understand that the, the fasting, right? We understand what this does for us. We understand prayer, we understand the, the guidance that Allah has given us, all the, the framework that Allah has given us. So our resources become a way for us to engage all of that, engage all of that in a way where it, it manifests in what? In righteous deeds. And Allah explains righteousness with right with righteous deeds are. Right? And it's a whole slew of activity. And it and it revolves around our awareness, our perception of those. Of, of, of uh, injustice, it revolves around our perception of inequity and inequality. It, it revolves around uh, our understanding that what we have, that there is a portion of that that is due to society, that is due to community. And we're supposed to go about our way in distributing that and putting that into motion, not just as individuals, but as a community. So our value for material life is much different. It's much different than the one who wants to simply, uh, who wants to simply build, who wants to simply show off to accumulate wealth, take the picture. This is what I got. I'm flossing, check me out, right? I'm over here, I'm doing this, right? It's our understanding of material or the acquisition of material wealth. It, 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 it is, it, it's almost a complete, uh, it's almost antithetical to the, uh, to what is celebrated. Right to the community, to the to the social values that have been created today, it is almost antithetical, right, in complete opposition to that. So we have been given this example that we can look back at as a, at a community that value 
uh, that value uh, their connection to Allah. They value obedience to Allah. They value uh, the, the connection to the community, right? This community says, let your eyes not go beyond those, that community, that group of people who, who are committed to their worship, who are committed to seeking Allah's face. It mean, means that you want, whatever you do, you are thinking about Allah in, in, in that moment. You are thinking about, about Allah in whatever the endeavor is. Right, so when we do that, we are seeking, we're seeking a lost space, we're seeking a lost place. And it takes a free person, it takes free people to understand understand it. Now, as we talk about, as we talk about being free people, it is important for us to understand the chains and the schemes that Shaitan would administer, right, to enslave us, right, to, to, to take us away from the freedom and from the potential. The excellence, the potential of excellence that Allah has given to us as individuals and as communities. It's important for us to understand what are those, what are those schemes. And one of the schemes is where Allah says that, uh, uh, he says to, 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 to not lose hold, right? He who grabs the handhold of the belief in Allah, right? That is a person. That is somebody who always has hope, right? That is a person who has hope in, in the life that is to come. That is a person who can look forward to Allah being who Allah says. Allah says that he is the all-forgiving, the most merciful, the provider, right? That you can look towards Allah being that, per, uh, being that for you, right? That you know you are accountable to Allah, but you know this because you are holding on to the, the handle, the rope, right? The rope of Allah. But shaitan offers the opposite. Shaitan offers, he offers a false perception that we are, we, are, uh, we are defined by our lowest moments. And shaitan would have us anchor ourselves and become enslaved to lose, lose that freedom, right? The freedom of possible growth, the freedom that is, that is afforded us through not just making the mistake, but being repentant and going back to Allah, right? Is exemplified by Adam alayhi salam, right? To make the mistake, to forget, right? To err, but to go back to Allah to call back on Allah. The shaitan would say, no, you are the worst thing that you have done. You are you at your lowest moment. You are you when you have uh, erred due to ignorance, through uh, lack of discipline, through not being able to control your appetites, right? Through, uh, through misunderstanding, through whatever the reason is. That is who you are. And you can be no more than that. Does that, does that sound familiar? Does that sound for me? Does that sound like the society that we live in, where the individual you get a you get a, a, a felony on you, and that follows you for the rest of your life? You make a mistake, you get a felony at 17, 18 years old, and that follows you for the rest of your life. And that that box, you check that off, and you go to apply for a job, you go to apply for school, you go to to move yourself from the your lowest point as a free person, because you recognize that you are you are able, you are capable of change, capable of development, that you don't define yourself by the mistake. But society, as a society that does not have that type of understanding, a society that does not have that free thinking, right? That is that is invested in keeping people, uh, keeping people enslaved. That is a society that is a that is a dangerous that is a dangerous society, and that is a dangerous way of thinking. And we see it play out all the time, day after day. When we think about another example, which comes to mind is Musa alayhi salam. Right, we think about him coming to uh, uh, Pharaoh to Pharaoh with with what the the good news and an ultimatum. Right, with direction, right, free the children of Israel, right, do not associate any God with God. And he is reminded before you re re refuting any of the points that he has been approached about, his first comment, his first statement is, is this you, the same one who messed up, the same one who killed a man and you had to run off the same one? 
Musa as a free person, as one who erred, who repented, who prayed, and received the assurance of Allah's forgiveness, was not, did not allow himself to be captured in that moment, did not allow himself to be anchored to a mistake, did not allow himself to be anchored to his lowest point, did not, did not allow himself to be enslaved by his past. He says, no, you know, it's not going to work. You got the wrong one. I did that. I did that when I was in error. When I was in error. I didn't know better, so I didn't do better. And what we have to understand is, as individuals, as free people, that freedom requires not just responsibility, but it requires mercy. It requires compassion because we grow into discipline. We don't start out with discipline, right? As children, you know, your child, you know, will run off. You know, you got some sweets out, and I'm a testament testimony uh, to that. You know, I think about my my lowest point as a probably as a seven or eight year old. You know, born with a sweet tooth, donuts up on the on the on the outside of my room, and I was probably already behind. You know. I, I was kind of set up to fail in this in this uh, instance, but my room is right off of the kitchen, and I got a sweet tooth, and I know it's these donuts, these wonderful Inman's donuts, sitting right on the refrigerator. And I come out of bed at about ten o'clock at night, nobody sleep, and I get a chair and I step up on a chair, give me some donuts, and I eat. I think I take them back to the bed with me, and I wake up with donut crumbs all over my mouth. My parents wake me up. Have you been in them donuts? Right? I'm too stupid to just say, yeah. All right? The evidence is on my face. No, I have been in donuts. <laughs> I have been, I've been, I'd have had a discipline and I, I got the, the, the appropriate response. You know, I can't look back and, and be mad because that was, that was stupid. That was, that was ignorant. That was ignorant. Did not have the discipline at that, at that point. But we grow into discipline. We grow into discipline. So we have to have a sense of mercy for those who act out without discipline before they have had the opportunity to grow into it. And, and discipline and this growth is gradual. And you don't come into it all at 40 years old. You don't come into it all at, at 50 or at 60 or 70. We are constantly growing. As free people, we are constantly growing. And we hold on to the rope of a lot. Once again, let's think, think about directionality. Let's think about, let's, from, from here to here, right? From here to here. We're holding on to the rope. We are pulling ourselves up. We are constantly moving upward. Doesn't mean that we don't slip, right? One hand doesn't slip. We don't come down, right? But we are constantly aware that our, we have an upward trajectory. And that's what we work towards. And we are merciful. We are merciful. And I bring this point up once again because those who would, who would choose to and like to uh, uh, inculcate this idea uh, that we should see ourselves at our worst, right? We should see ourselves at, at our worst. That type of thinking, when we think about Bilal ibn Rabbah, uh, when we think about uh, that, we can, we can see that his oppressors, his tormentors, would have liked to put so much pressure on him, that hot stone out in the, in, the, in the desert, his body is on the sand, he's literally cooking and being and crushed to death at the same time, this slow death. They would like to remind him that the uh, devalued existence that you had before this as a servant would be better for you. It would be better for you just to go ahead and give up right now, right? Anchor yourself, anchor yourself to subservience. Anchor yourself to servitude. Anchor yourself to not seeing yourself as a full human being worthy of all of the rights and freedoms of everyone else around you. Anchor yourself to that. But that is not what Bilal, uh, Ibn Rabbi Ibn did. He was holding on to the rope of Allah. He was holding on to freedom and recognizing what his, what his rightful potential was and what he was owed. And when we do that, that is a, that, that is a frustration. That is a frustration for shaitan. But as I, but I want to come, kind of come back and say as it relates to the mercy. Because we're in a society that has this, uh, this element of cancel culture, right? 
we're in a society that now tells you that you are, you are, you are the worst thing that you ever did. And once we find out about it, we're going to take everything from you and we're going to discard you, right? You're no longer, you're, you're not part, you're not, you, you, you don't have the potential to move up. You don't have the potential to repent and to do better. Right? Because we're in that society, it is all the more important for us as this community who claims the, the favorite potential, right? The, the, the community that has been elevated for the benefit of humanity, not for our own benefit, but for the benefit of humanity, wherever we are. Because we're that community, it means that we have to be in, in the individuals that embody mercy, that embody compassion that do not allow for our brothers and sisters, our neighbors, do not allow, and the stranger, right, to be, um, uh, uh, to be tied towards the worst, right? So we have a commitment to justice. We have a commitment to justice and we have a commitment to accountability, but we also understand that the soul that Allah has blessed each of us with and brought us out from is a soul that has a potential and has inherent dignity and excellence built into it. And that is what we have to be about protecting and elevating and make sure that we understand that our compassion, our mercy towards ourselves and towards others allows us to bring that about, inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Umar, alhamdulillah. The praises for Allah, the praises for Allah, and then the praises for Allah. Uh, I don't make any, uh, um, I guess I, I came upon this particular train of thought in terms of mercy. Um, just considering the, 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 the Will Smith, Chris Rock debacle. Um, and there were many people, uh, and of course I was one of them, you know, I'm sure we all had conversations about it, like that was really messed up, and what do you think about this, and what, you know, and all these different, all these different conversations and takes on that. He released a video, I think a couple of days ago, and I just happened to look at it this morning. And one of the things that he said in there that I found uh, to be valuable in this setting for us as believers who understand, number one, as we call on and remind ourselves of our relationship with our Lord, our Rabb, right? The one who brings the thing from its lowest, right? Its immature state to its mature state, according to its unique design. The one who is our educator, our evolver. When we think about that, it's important for us to remember the idea of progression, right? And, and within that pro progression, it's not a smooth progression. It's not, it doesn't mean, you know, it, it means that, we will move up and we'll fall back. And we'll move up and we may fall back. But we hope, we hope that over the course of the time that Allah gives us is that we do more progressing than we do regressing. And what he said that really caught me, he said, um, because he's answering questions to people. And he says, I, uh, one of the questions was, um, uh, how do you feel about uh, letting down, you know, people who believed in you and, you know, all of this. Right, first of all, believe in Allah. First thing, believe in Allah. Um, but as he's answering the question, he says, you know, one of my biggest traumas is knowing that I've let down so many people, right? Letting down the public. That is a, 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 a psychological trauma. For me. He said, but also as I think about that, and I realize that I'm, I'm committed to doing the work of becoming better. And of course, he mentioned that there was, there was never any right uh, there was never any scenario where his actions would have been justified and he was wrong and he apologized. He was, you know, remorseful on that. But he said, as I think about, uh, uh, think about the situation, it's difficult for me. Or one of my, his, his challenges, and I'm paraphrasing, one of the challenges is to take accountability, but not to live in a state of shame and not to look at myself as a, I, I can't use the word, as a, as a piece of crap. Right, not to not to identify myself because of this this incident, 
as public as it was, right? And, and Allah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our mistakes, that our lapses don't get to be covered and seen by tens or tw- you know hundreds of millions of people to be replayed and dissected and have people look at us and make all types of assumptions about who we are and our relationships and all these things. We can only thank Allah that Allah has favored us that the majority of our mistakes, the majority of our errors are only known, may only be known to ourselves and Allah and may be known to those, to, to ourselves and the individuals that, um, that that's involved. But to be in a society and to, to, to join into the fray of condemnation, to join into the fray of saying that everything that you have done up to this point is irrelevant. Now this is who you are. Now this is who you are. I'm going to anchor you to your lowest point. I'm going to anchor you to that to that moment where you, you lost your discipline. We are less than as a society when we allow ourselves to fall into that. As believers, we are protectors. We are protectors to, towards one another. And protection it does not mean that we don't hold one another accountable. Protection also means that when you're injured, you do not cause further injury. Protection sometimes is, is offering healing. Protection sometimes is, is offering mercy. Sometimes protection is, is offering compassion. All right, but, and so it's important for us to understand that we live in a, a, it's, it's a dichotomy that we live with. Our gathering here, once again, it's in complete opposition to, uh, to much of society. Right? Everybody else, our, our prayer happens during the work week. Everybody else is praying on the weekend. Right? Our, our way of life, our, our prayer, our, just our whole sense of being, it is, at a, it is at a different level. And it's not to take anything from anyone else. But it is to remind us that what we have, it is something that we don't just need as individuals, it is something that we need as a society. So we pray that Allah allows us, allows us to recognize the potential that he's given each of us as individuals. And more importantly, he allows us to recognize it as, as community. Because the better we become as individuals, the better we become as a community. So if we want to make the community better, we become better. And we do that by holding on to the rope of Allah. We do that by never forgetting the potential for excellence that we have and not allowing ourselves to be defined by our mistakes, not allowing ourselves to be defined by our lapses and our ignorance. We can do some things in error, but Allah has given us guidance. So let us hold on to this guidance and let this guidance be a reflection of our love and our reverence for Allah. Let that guidance allow us to move forward as individuals and as communities and Allah continues to protect us. Amen.